Yeah. So here we go again. I'm joined by a familiar face. Um, I can't quite picture what show this man is from. Um, it just doesn't come to the top of my head. Mr. Martin Maloney, how are you doing, man? I'm good, thank you, Morris. How are you? Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you on this fine uh, Sunday evening. Yes, Sunday evenings, right? I like the way you're wearing the Ganners, North London there, mate. North London, good <laughs> Irish team. We we used to have a good few. We used to have a good few nice, uh, a good few Irish players. We don't have any now. Would you be going up to the Oxford Arms there in Islington for a couple of Lutioners before going down to the old Harbury? Where did I is go? It the Emirates last Stadium, is it nowadays? Emirates. Yeah, I think it was in a place called the Twelve Pins. I think is what it was called last time. Good and obviously, yeah, and obviously a couple of Witherspoons along the way as well. Oh man, why wouldn't you yeah. like get yeah. an old curry, five quid, and a pint oh, perhaps? The food is shit in there, though, isn't it? Well, do you know what? It depends on which one you're going to. You know, yeah, but like if you've got about seven pints in here and the the, the hunger is upon a man. You don't go looking a gift teaker in the mouth, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, now it's fucking jam bam. But they don't <laughs> do jam bams there, like, but I saw, I actually saw it as a, as a Twitter channel or a Twitter page called uh, Dub's Life. And uh, I, I see videos being shared from them. I was like, gosh, really give them an old follow. There was a lad in uh, Dame Street Spa paying seven quid for a chicken roll. I was like, ah, Putin's fault. It's Putin for you. <laughs> Yeah, man, the, those Witherspoons even are popping up like everywhere. Here they're in now. Ireland, are they? Yeah, yeah, they're everywhere. Like, there's even and one in you, Carlo. Are you like... frequenting them? Do you? No, you not really. For a pint of Doom Bar. <laughs> there's one Doom Bar. No way. There, the there's lady. one. <laughs> there's one oh, in Carlo now. Carol Bashkin. Is that Hillary Clinton's twin sister? Is it? <laughs> Poor old Carol gets an awful going over, doesn't she? She does, like, does she? I've I've Who's had. The <laughs> I I was only, I've had two people on in the last year. Uh, you Carol get Baskin. sable the wrestler on, did you? <laughs> no, that's I see you got some, you got some rather uh, exotic female guests on there. Yeah. Laundry wrestlers, send yeah. them on my way. Hey. Send them on my way. Hey. Send You'd them have on crack my them. way. <laughs> the crack, fucking, you know yourself, hey. Burden of everyone one one wing. I had a 59-year-old porn star on last week and YouTube demonetized the interview. Who was that? Nina Hartley, was it? Her name is Ginger Lynn. That's her name. Ginger Lynn. Let me have, yeah, do a bit have of a Google in here. Have a, have, a, have a bit of a Google there. She was in, uh, she's in like kind of horror movies now at the moment and she's out, she's out of the game, except for only fans. Ginger Lynn, 62, from Illinois. If I click on images here, I might see some... Oh. Some interesting stuff. Yeah. Don't see any wavin yet. <laughs> but she's uh she's doing a bit of shifting there now with Amberlyn, whoever that is. Tell you, she's like she's like a BMW seven series from the early nineties, like you know what I mean? She's she's holding up well. Yeah. <laughs> Ginger Lynn dead? Is Ginger Lynn still alive or dead? Updated 2022. Well, obviously she's still alive. Um good looking woman in the day, man, and, and fair play, she held up well. Um, yeah. But, uh, well, there's one picture here. Isn't that flattering? But yeah, you know what? Like, if, I, if I got to that age, I, I'd be doing well. To to is that Lucas Aid? <laughs> you drinking a can of Lucas Aid? Can of Lucas Aid? Yeah, it's not very I hardcore. Is it? Aid, no. Well, I haven't seen that in a long time, man. Lucas Aid can't can get it over there, no. Uh, no, you can't. But I, I love the way when anyone is ever ill or in a hospital, <laughs> they just drop off a glass bottle of Lucas Aid. It's like here, have some glucose. Yeah, with um, sunset yellow food coloring as well, just to just, just to give it some vibe, you know. Box my my grapes, two bunch of flowers. My two year old was sick a few weeks ago. We brought him to the doctor, and it turns Lose out he had it. He, no, yeah, it turns out he had tonsillitis. And the doctor goes, uh, "This is before he knew he had tonsillitis." He goes, ah, "I'm not really sure what's wrong with him." So he read out a prescription for Calpol, and he was like, "And if you know." And give him some seven up, and you know, even if he won't take the seven up, you can give him a can of coke either. But even a can of Lucas Aid, yeah, the can can of cans now, yeah, they used to come in little glass bottlings. But uh, yeah, you know, I tell you, the old uh, the old Calpol's the right job. I, I had to get the tonsils out when I was about seven, and you know, the way when you're if you've ever been to a hospital for an operation when you're a kid, parents. <laughs> They make such a, you know, parents and, and medical staff make such a fuss 
of the fact that you're in hospital. Ah, it'd be great. Ah, look at it. Then you're like, wow, hospital's great crack. But it's just a distraction from the fact that you're going in to get a medical procedure done that will involve pain. And I went there, got the tonsils out. And uh, other than the fact that I was in pain, I was hanging out with other lads on the ward. They were like, would you like some, what would you like? And I'm like, can I get some ice cream? And they're like, sure. And uh, to be waited on hand and foot by nurses, uh, I was always hoping that I would be able to go back into hospital again afterwards. But fortunately, looking back, I was quite healthy other than the tonsillitis. But I yeah. always wondered, like, any any time I get sick, I'd be like, please let me go to the hospital. So I had great crack, Arrow Park Hospital, place I was born. Same place as Jason McAteer, who you might remember, who played for Liverpool, the Republic of Ireland, and uh, he gave it his all for Vidal Sassoon 2-in-1 shampoo and conditioner. So born in Arrow Park as well. <laughs> um, speaking of hospital, like you've been, you're living in a very dangerous country over there over the last couple of years, and you're what still you alive. <laughs> <laughs> You're still yeah. alive. How still was, alive, how was, yeah. You know, how was like, things over there? Things are sound. Like uh, yeah. I was, I was out today and yesterday, taking a walk around the old town. The place is buzzing. The economy is thriving. Um, the only problem is they're having in the hospitality sector is during the, you know, pandemic. Uh, people were just kind of kicked to the curb who were who working in the hospitality sector. So. They all went into different occupations, went back to college and, and studied something else. And now they're desperate looking for staff in restaurants and hotels and that kind of thing. Um, but other than that, you know, like, every, you know, you'd, you'd be talking in discussions with people in Sweden, like Sweden, reckless behavior, Tignell, reckless, reckless. They're all, and then all now looking back, yeah, sound really did. They played a blinder. Uh, I have to say well done to Sweden for basically treating it like any other um, seasonal respiratory illness. And <laughs> yeah, let people get on with it, you know. And uh, meanwhile, in Ireland, people, uh, you know, they're bouncing back from what I've heard. But, uh, you know, I've not been home for two and a half years and I, I certainly wasn't going to be going back there while, you know, people were saying, wear a mask, you'll kill granny. Oh. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I think um, the whole, my, my stance on things is, very small governmental well saying that sweden is very much a uh, kind of a micromanaging helicopter state when it comes to when i say helicopter i mean like floating around wanting to know what you're doing all the time but on this one particular subject they they played it straight down the line as it should have been done whereas um i was quite surprised with ireland that it was you know it's all media driven you know and even Bill gates has come out and, and said well, it's uh, it's very f similar to flu-like symptoms, and it uh, you know would uh, affect people who were mostly very elderly. It's like yeah, you know we we knew that from day one, but the media had like had stoked the flames of hysteria so much that um you know this is the the situation we're living in, where it's basically the media is it, it can create something that's artificial or over exaggerated. And most people don't have the cognitive ability to read between the lines or decipher using the data that they can see all around them in, in real time. But it's like if Claire Byrne or News Talk tells them that it's okay to go out, then they will finally go out. But they, they a lot of people nowadays, I think, just can't really see the wood from the trees, unfortunately. But, um, you know, Morris, you see me, I've done the Hardy books with the other lads and it was always observational and a bit close to the wind and you know we just basically say what we see and that's how i've always lived my life just trust yeah. your own instincts yeah it was, it bastards. was crazy. <laughs> bastards <laughs> a lot of them luke o'neill said uh, it's time to get the fifth dose now uh, i actually got three because um i wanted to uh go on holiday visually yeah wanted to, i wanted to go to wrestlemania this year and that was my only option so how did it go it was a good crack that was good crack yeah i went to dallas texas and well when you're in texas they were like sweden pretty much like they just kind of mm. got on with stuff as well like and that, that's what people in the states were saying oh texas and florida are fucking crazy and this that and the other but uh yeah we had we had to actually do a test before we left as well 
Um, 20, what, the, the, 24 the, hours beforehand. So, someone out there has done very well from all this financially. Like mm-hmm. whoever makes the test kits, the people in charge of the labs. God, man, you can imagine whoever get, got the contracts for the PPE stuff. Amazing money. You know, it's like you're talking, you can buy McLarens, Ferraris, Lear Jets, you know, stay at five star hotels for the rest of your life. Your kids can go to the finest Ivy League colleges. Not that they're coming out with anyone who can, you know, think clearly. But yeah, well done to them. I'm going to get into um, definitely climate sustainability, diversity, and um, just being like pandemic friendly. So I'm, I, my this stream is nearly carbon negative at the moment. So I just want to let you know that just to be proud of this, that definitely get on to um, all of the the, the Fortune 500 companies, and they will totally back this stream because I am actually a very diverse individual and I'm trying to make this stream as carbon neutral as possible. This light and the the computer I'm using, I actually had it rigged up to a battery to an exercise bike that I was on earlier on. So I was, it is it's all it's completely um, carbon neutral. I have plants in the room as well that are helping to absorb the carbon and they're bringing out oxygen. So I mean, this is a 100% sustainable, eco-friendly, and I mean, I'm very diverse. I mean, it's just, just me here in the room with you, but if there was other people of different spectrums of, of lo- different walks of life, then they would totally be on this podcast with me, man. So it's like this bottle here, for example, this was a, um, a cu- it says Cal Press Pressad. It was, it was a bottle that I've recycled. I'm using it as a water receptacle instead of throwing it into the trash, but I would have recycled anyway. So, as I say, you should be very proud that your guest is very sustainability conscious and um, rock and roll, man. That's all I'll say. Yeah, I, I was I was fucking really nervous though about uh, doing a a test twenty four hours before I left. You know, in case it will come back negative and you'd be able to, you wouldn't go to WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, I would be you myself. Know, so that was that was kind of the only thing, but uh, yeah, it was grand in the end. And uh, but then we didn't have to do anything coming back, uh, which is funny like you, you don't need a test going into ireland this was just a kind of a i think us and canada thing and maybe yes it's been shit, isn't it though morris when you think about it like you can go from ireland for the states have to have to take the test and have all the proof of vaccination but then you can just go back and take something from america with you if it's there you know yeah like i don't know I, it's like without getting you know obviously it's, it's a light-hearted conversation and, and whatnot yeah. But uh, I just think that the entire, you know, the the halls of power in the United States are beholden to their corporate sponsors. So, like, I don't know. Look at the uh, the Biden administration, man, and it's uh, it's just like it's a, a monumental shit fest. And all the people who complained about Trump being as bad as he was, there was no war. Well, there was there was war, but there's no new war, and he's trying to pull things out. Look. Trump is a greasy dude, man. Do you know what I mean? He he would do yeah. things like, you know, build a casino, for example, get a contractor in and then not pay the contract. And the contractor's yeah. like, why aren't you paying us? Like, well, you're using Ill- illegal Im- immigrants as part of your workforce. Like, he pulled a lot of strokes. You don't become yeah. multi-million, a billionaire from doing things the right way. So, of course, but like what you have now is just complete disaster. Yeah, everyone hates uh, Biden over there. Well, everyone that we spoke to in Texas anyway, but that's that's a whole other story. I seen uh, Mr. Stephen Kelly was out with you there a while ago in Sweden. You were doing something. Oh, the cowboy, before. yeah, he was here. Yeah, geez, that was like, um, that was about 10 months ago nearly, quite a while ago. How long ago it was? Yeah, I've has he been on the podcast? Have you, have yeah, you yeah, him yes. on yeah, I've, I've had, had him on twice. A, uh, good lad, good old Stevie. I, I was listening to the, uh, the last one you did with Owen. While doing the laundry, and I was like, "Ah, oh, that's a good, good crack." Now listening to the boys chatting, it was nice and yeah. nice and laid back, nice and like, unscripted. Unscripted is right. Why would you yeah. want to listen to a scripted podcast? Unless you listen to the Hardy Book, that's available on the Hardy Books podcast. A um, little bit of a shout out there. Um, quite difficult to get the fire under my own ass and and finish the episodes, but yeah, there's a lot going on. A lot going on. It's like uh, when you've got kids divorced and you know working and doing different bits and pieces um and also just you know it takes a lot of time and I'm, i don't i think i need to get back to ireland in order to kind of like remember who it is that i actually am 
you know, and and before the whole pandemic thing, I was back in Ireland like two or three times a month. And that would like, that would, inc- you know, that would kind of make me have more interest in the social media kind of side of things. Oh. But uh, I like, I know this Stevie's doing things daily, you know, as is Owen. But then, you know, if, when you've been away this long, you're like, actually, what's the point? My most of my followers in Ireland, are in Ireland, so it's not going to really, not going to get me, help me to sell gigs in Sweden, you know? Mm. Plus Sweden and comedy. Are you focusing on the music over there now, more so than the comedy, or what are you what are you up to there, gig ways? Um, yeah, I've been, been doing, just like, just doing cover gigs and that kind of thing, but um, it's, it's really given me a, it's kept the, the live appearance side of me very sharp and um and musically it's like i step on the stage with complete confidence now so i've been busy enough doing live gigs and that kind of thing over here but um looking forward to getting back to ireland doing some gigs just getting back out meeting people like today i was in town i met a lad from tulsk called martin truck driver who uh interestingly enough i was like what are you doing what are you doing here? And he's like, he's like, oh, it's my favorite fucking TV show ever. And he knew a few of the boys from Swinford. Shout out to fucking Ruan. But uh, he he drove a truck from Balaná to Stockholm. And apparently the Coca-Cola factory in Balaná is the only factory in Europe that does concentrated Coca-Cola syrup. So he dropped a whole load of that off here to Sweden. And then it'll go from the depot there and be distributed in, into little sacks that go into the wow. bar then. And then the little sacks in McDonald's tsh, machines and that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas the machines, you know, you drink drink the coke, then a little little cupping. Do you think you'd be able to smuggle? Do you think you'd be able to smuggle you back in the lorry then back to back to Ballina? Fucking half thinking about it, man. Half <laughs> thinking about it. If I didn't have kids here now, I'd be fucking gone. All the stuff. Half back to Schmunford by handy numbers then in Ireland then. Fucking shaking hands with Lads up in Leinster House going, come here, I've got a couple of touches. Own Colgan money, man. I've been Own Colgan money. <laughs> Colgan's got himself a fucking diamond plate of Rolls Royce. That's only, must... that's only the, the runaround car. That man is in some amount of advertisements, isn't he? Oh, uh, he's like, I, I hear Kev McGarren. Everyone's like, he's on the radio all the time. Jingles. Jingles. Dacia. The Duster. Fucking three mobile. It's handy if you can get it, boy. Fucking handy if you can get it. Yeah. The... <laughs> <laughs> have you just been kind of? Uh, you were saying that you come back to Ireland a good bit, like. But have you just been waiting, kind of, for all this stuff to die down and get back yeah. to normal before you come back? When do you? Think yeah, but then on back? top of it, then you've got like the the price of fuel has just gone up to ludicrous levels as well. So it's like. And also, I have to come back with the kids because the kids are a bit pissed off that they haven't been back for two and a half years. So then I have to wait till some holidays for them. And I've got to find a new, a new, I've got to move into a new apartment soon over here as well. So I just want to get all that shit out of the way until I come back then because I could go back before then. But in the back of my mind, I'd be like, got to get that shit sorted, got to get that shit sorted. So I wouldn't be able to enjoy the, the trip properly. So I'd say hopefully I'll come back in July or August, maybe come over for a couple of weeks. Get a couple of gigs in and just kind of you know i've been gone so this is the longest i've ever been away from home it's like two and a half years man it's like it's weird you know what i mean it's like i'd say i'm, I'm gonna be in for quite quite a, a shock when i go back things probably have changed but um it's come to the stage where i've been gone so long that i don't really feel a bit weird about going back don't know what to expect but then i'm sure when i get back i'll be like why the fuck did i come home sooner this is great crap yeah yeah, now it was zero crack there for a while and all that shit we touched on earlier, but things are getting back to normal, like gigs are happening and pubs are full and Should things Green like Day that. Were playing in Stockholm last night? Were they, yeah? Yeah. Green Day, I, I think they're playing here in a couple of weeks as well. Oh, they're busy boys, man. Busy yeah. boys. I remember I, think I was really big into Green Day when I was a teenager. And then when I came back from interrailing, I was away for a couple of months in, in like 2002. And I remember like seeing them in Witness it was just like lads dressed up as chickens playing trumpets and there was lots of fanfare and mad shit going on on the stage. You know? And then I was just a bit like, that's a bit fucking shite, man. Yeah. After that, I just had like no interest in them. So like, uh, you know, Dookie and yeah, it was a good album. It was album. 
then I remember they had like some sort of like super smash hits. I just wasn't really into them after that, you know? Yeah. Then they had American Idiot and that everything changed after that, really. Yeah, it was it was like they were trying to be all political and serious. Uh but you know, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, good tune. Uh Wake Me Up When September Ends. You know, they've they've got definitely got some great tunes. You know, obviously you don't you don't get that you don't reach those heights of success without having you know, without something successful, even though Westlife <laughs> <laughs> But it's subjective, you know what I mean? It's like I'm not I'm not shitting on Westlife because they have they have a market for what they do. Um you know, and, and they're very professional. I have met some of the Westlife guys and their sound and um it's not my cup of tea, but you know, like anyone who can sustain a you know multi decade spanning career, fair play to them. You know, um Yeah. Well, well done, well done. Danny dies in his tenders now, you know what I mean? And uh, Garrett Brooks is coming back. You might come back for that. Is he coming back for like a, a, a three month stint at Crow Park? <laughs> I think he's doing he's doing five nights, I believe. Yeah. He's got his five nights, but they're separated over two weekends or something. Because remember all the all the shit that happened over that before. Yeah, I mean, you know, I never understood why because you know, like when I was a, a kid growing up, you know, especially when I was living in, in the UK in Liverpool, both my parents are both from Mayo. And they only listened to like country irish country and western or like charlie pride or you know like willie nelson johnny cash that kind of thing which is now cool to listen to that american sun studios kind of stuff mm. but like there was i remember my mum listened to songs such as like i'm nobody's child i'm nobody's child and this is like daniel o'donnell kind of stuff and but there's a huge market for some reason for like Irish, uh, the country and Western scene. I think maybe because rural Ireland is is so agricultural that there's a lot that they can, you know, there's a lot that they feel like they have in common with people who are like in South Dakota or Kansas or mm. Oklahoma, home of Tiger King and the boys. You know, it's <laughs> like, and I remember watching, I haven't seen the second series of Tiger King, but there was something about just seeing lads knocking around on ATVs, shooting guns, and just being pissed the whole time and smoking bongs. And I was like, "Nice way of life, man." You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> seemed like, but there was all you know it, on the surface. It was like, looked like good crack. You know what I mean? Just, just knocking around with animals and razzing around on four by fours and shooting AR-15s. But then mad shit happens. You know, it's like, it's like. And that lad just accidentally shot himself. Yeah, yeah. You're just like, wow. I mean, I, I like, I'd, I want to go there just to experience, like, you know, like somewhere like Idaho, where you're like way up there in like the the, the northwest, and uh, it's like mountains and plains and you know, massive lakes, and you know, you can just fucking razz around in like a, yeah. a four by four buggy for hours. I mean, that seems pretty cool. I'd enjoy that, but. You'd also want to go and get like a Thai green curry or something and drink some yeah. crap beer. Yeah. I thought I thought that Texas would be all sand and tumbleweeds, but I was wrong. What was it um, like? Well, the part we were in Dallas was just it was a city, but every everything yeah. was everything was so far away over there. So that was the first time I was in the states. Like everything was oh, maybe was everything was maybe half an hour taxi to like really? a gate to WrestleMania to anywhere we were kind of going was like a taxi whereas you know like if you're out over here in a city or in dublin or something you can kind of just walk everywhere yeah so what was uh, it, what was dallas like in terms of do you go for any pints or anything afterwards oh we went for loads of pints yeah i don't know uh, I, was, I was i was djing over there as well um oh, yeah. before before one of the wrestling events yeah and uh Where did you, you should you should in a rock bar you should have seen the oh, uh the, like great crack man you should have seen the you african the American warrior intro tune yeah but but the last song I played was Ain Fuckalella by Richie Kavanagh. Oh, man. <laughs> and it was like African-American guys doing Kayleys. It was fantastic. Buck, 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 buck off. Yeah, I went, I went down to the sound engineer and I was like, now I'm going to play something at the end and it's not by mistake. So just make sure it don't, don't switch me off. How did you get the gig? <laughs> Sent an email, just said I'd be over there. Uh, I've done a few wrestling parties in Dublin. Just, uh, like I kind of get any guests just 
send an email and hope for the best. Do you know the lads from uh, OMC Wrestling? From what wrestling? Is it OMC Wrestling? OMC. No, it doesn't ring a bell. Oh, what's your what's your mind? Because uh, Chris Perez, my friend, he's always he's always listening to like they do this. Um, they do these like nineteen wrestling, uh, like WWF wrestling stuff. Oh, let me see if I've got the name right. So, if I'm totally butchering the name, of these guys, I'm probably remembering the name. Let me just check. Are they Irish? Yeah, and they're like they're doing really well. Actually, they're um. Probably about like twenty grand a month from. Oh, is it OSW? OSW, OSW review. Is that it? Yeah, yeah those I don't. Last. I don't know those guys, but I've seen some good some stuff. Like it's very, very, very good. Do you know them? Uh, I don't know them personally, but uh, I follow one yeah. of them on Twitter, um, yeah. and they gave us the shout out on a video once. But I was, um, I, I know Owen O'Hearn, who was the um, the booking agent for Cypress Avenue. He does he did um, a tour with Shawn Michaels there, so I've got a t shirt oh, yeah. with Heartbreak Kid over the ropes. Yeah, 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 Cypress Avenue. Yeah, big yeah, shout out to the main man there. Yeah, I think he had Kurt Angle there. I think last month, Olympic gold medalist. Fucking Kurt, fucking yeah. the main antagonist himself. Would you consider Kurt Angle as being a heel? <laughs> Would I? Uh, he spent a, he spent a lot of his time as a heel, I guess. Yeah, he was kind of like a. <laughs> it was a bit of a juxtaposition because he's all like USA, you know, like Olympic gold medalist. But at the same time, his he was. Um, his his behavior was that of a heel, mm. but he was a patriotic heel. So I guess looking at the overall American vibe, he's like the perfect American, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like aggressively patriotic and, and that kind of. What do you mean? I want to speak to my lawyer. You can't do this to me. I'm an American. God damn it! That kind of way. Yeah, the best the best thing about WrestleMania. I don't know if you've seen it this year, but the lads that went with me, like I went with two guys from here that don't watch wrestling so uh it was a hard sell because it's over two nights now so that was we didn't so do anything else header, did you double header we didn't do anything else like, there's loads of shows on for that week but i was with guys that like did not watch it so i was like right we'll go to wrestlemania and everything else we'll do will be nothing to do with wrestling you know and yeah. um but steve austin came back and uh, johnny knoxville was in a match uh, what's his name? Logan Paul was in the match. There was loads See, of kind of like, yeah, there was funny shit that happened that kind of pulled them in as a casual fan, which was good. I was thinking about getting really jacked and uh, getting in touch with Shane as a wrestler and then just saying like, I'm his younger brother, Hamish. <laughs> They're actually doing an angle at the moment with a guy called, um, well, his name was Elias and he went off TV and he had a beard and he had a guitar and this guy came back. He's the same guy, but now he's playing Ezekiel. I'm Elias's brother. So you could do something like that. Yeah, I once... Um, there's a guy called... Um, what's his fucking name? Ray. It's um, Seamus's manager. Ray Senior, his name is. Um, and we were hanging out with a Corminator from California. Yeah, Ray. you told me this last time, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, just it was cool to meet uh Seamus over there because like anytime I go to the States, I was in Mexico and Cancun there in January again, and and everyone's just like, Yo, Seamus. I'm like, Yeah, it, like at the time, even like he was on the late late show, and my uncle Martin was like ringing up my mum, going, What's he doing on the late late show? <laughs> He's put on weight, but uh, yeah, I, you know, it'd be a man, I'd fucking definitely be up for that, you know what I mean? To do something, I, I get proper jacked, just like the gains. I've uh, I've started hitting the gym again as of two days ago. I, I just like got a bit got a bit lazy, started getting a bad back, and I was like, okay, the bad back is because I'm not like been exercising. And when you get older, especially when you have kids, you need to be fit. And as Big Mick from Hardy Books once said to me in real life, I know if you're fit, you're fit for anything. <laughs> that's the, that's he, he, he's like uh he must be the most natural i think character that was ever on that show is he oh it's brilliant you know like 
He's well, not amped up at all, is he? He's just no, himself. But I knew, I knew damn well he'd be very. It's like the, it's like like Tom Cagallan who plays the boo. Like the, there's just yeah. we'd be hanging out and we'd just be kind of telling stories. And and I was like, this guy's a natural, but he doesn't know it. And he never would have expected to have been like. I remember him telling us a story back when we were living in Galway in um, <clears throat> uh, Spanish Parade, and he was telling us a story about his old boss, and he was going. I'm not a I'm not a whiskey alcoholic. I'm a wine alcoholic. Different. It's not as bad. I'm I'm a wine alcoholic. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but when I see him doing, I was like, yeah, he's 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 got he's got what it takes, you know, for the screen. But uh, same thing with with Big Mick. I remember like when we we did the Bebo episodes, and we were showing him just like you know me picking up salmon with the dog in the car and. He was watching it, and, you know. We were in, I was watching what he was thinking as he was watching it. And at the end of it, he goes, "Yeah," mm. and that's comedy, is it? <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, are you interested?" I'd have a think about it. And then when we got into storyline, then an RT was involved. He's like, "Oh, I'll be in that." Yeah, mm. I, just remember, I remember the first day we were doing the the foamy nights when it was, it was the first time he'd ever been in Hardy Books. I just like, and, and he just gets straight into the character couldn't stop laughing because it was just so funny to see Eugene just got it's gone straight into it and just owned it and I, I like I just couldn't I just couldn't stop laughing at how how fucking funny he was and yeah but um uh, hopefully there you know hopefully we're, we're gonna get another another crack of the whip soon <clears throat> and my voice is a bit fucked because I've got some weird kind of summer cold about like the last two weeks I don't know if it's pollen or a summer cold but Early mornings and late evenings, it starts kind of kicking off. Have you got any Benadryl over there? Have you? <laughs> Do you have any any update on that, or is there any any wheels in motion about doing anything? There, there is. There's certain wheels in motion, and um, there is an investor involved. Um, I can't really go into it in, into too much detail, but I, I've written yeah. three episodes so far, and I've just got to crack on and keep writing. But um. I've just got to just fucking force myself. I've got to get out of my, I've got to get out of my worst distraction is the internet. It's just like, yeah, it's impossible to fucking do anything when it's like, Oh, Twitter, YouTube, fucking this, this. Yeah. The phone. It's like the yeah. amount of time I piss away on Twitter. Just like arguing with pricks <laughs> and arguing. We're just like going, yeah. No, it's a waste of fucking time, man. but it's, you know, very interesting at the same time. There'll be a lot of people glad to know that anyway, that there might be something hopefully coming up. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, what are, the things I've written, are like the three episodes I've written already are very funny. And um, I started writing one on Friday, and then Tom Cagallan phoned me in the middle of writing it. I was just on the phone to him for an hour, and then we looked at the cl- clock. I was like, got to go to bed now. And it's been a very busy weekend of doing things with the young fella. So um, I've had a nice little cozy weekend with with the young book, and uh, that is you know priority really. Before you know tomorrow he's going to go to school, and I'm going to continue on writing the episode, and then maybe I might get another one done and another one done, and then they have a little handful of them then, and then when they're done, we can talk to the producers and get it get it made. But uh, I don't know what the stories of RTE like. It's uh, they were given a organic grassroots very funny comedy show that was acquired by netflix and i don't know like i don't know what the fucking story is there with them to be honest with you it's um i mean i don't don't know if they're open to doing a new show but we'll see i don't know maybe maybe not i don't know you can't wait around on them forever either no it would have been like be nice if there's you know you've just got like someone who is representative of a unlimited amount of cash and it's saying, do you want a series? Do you want a 12 part series? Here you go and make it. Um, but yeah, like in, in many ways, I'm kind of, I suppose I don't really, if, like I, I, I don't really have the same passion. Maybe that's just because I haven't done it for so long. But if, if, if I know that it's definitely being greenlit, then I'd, I'd be well up for doing something. But uh, you know, there's been so many like false starts over the years that you get a bit kind of, worn out and especially you know as i said when 
now I'm divorced. It's kind of like I've got the kids half the time and you're kind of like catching up. And uh, being a single mom is the toughest job in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, man. It's just like with... I, just gotta, I think I've just got to go back to Ireland and touch base, to be honest, and then have a think about it then. Yeah. But, It'll probably um, be good good for the mind to get over here as well and just... Good for the soul, Morris. Yeah. It'll be nice to see the family, friends, and just nice to go back and knock about and... and just like have the crack with people who, you know, you don't need to like, you know, you don't need to like explain things, you know, people just get what you're on about automatically. And yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it'll do me the world good to get back. Got to get back soon, Mars. Got to get back soon. Well, back is, there any, July. <laughs> is there anything else in the pipeline? Are you doing anything? Not really. Like, I mean, like it doesn't sound that exciting, but uh, not really. You know, it's like, yeah. I'm just, um, I'm, I'm happy enough. Just fucking tipping away i mean i think it's nice to kind of step back from it all because you know the, the world of fame is a it's a fickle old world where you know it's, it's one of the things where you just got to constantly keep you know i've often looked at other other people who i admired in tv i'm like why, why didn't they continue on like i think there's, there's a certain stage where you're just like there's more to life than trying to be you know, keeping up appearances and, and just, like, staying relevant. You know, you look at the likes of Madonna, for example. Like, yeah, very successful, but could you imagine, like, hanging out with Madonna or being one of her kids? And she's just, like... She's, like, sometimes you've you've got to kind of just, like, bow out gracefully, and if maybe, you know, a couple of years later, something comes... Like, look at Mickey Rourke, for example. Mickey Rourke was... He had a couple of years where he went into professional boxing, and then probably drinking drugs for a bit and, and hit the uh, rock bottom. And, uh, yeah, then he came back and started with a wrestler and then he was in Iron Man 3 and many other films. So I think it's a good thing just to kind of take a couple of years out and, and just, like, live a normal life again. And I do, for, I do feel like I'm pretty much back to who I was before it happened, which for me feels nice. You know, it's like... When when you're at the in your, when you're in the eye of the storm, you've got to kind of watch what you say and and you know it's the responsibility of if I say something, then I could ruin it for everything else because you've got some twatty reporter who just wants to blow something out of proportion to be like yeah. I brought you that story, you know and um, yeah just kind of like the idea of just like living a normal life it's quite nice. And what's the crack then with your with your YouTube channel for people that might want to know what you're to be up to on it? <clears throat> You'd be watching it much, do you? <clears throat> I see a few solid chats, very very relaxed. I seen yeah, Breffney so, Morgan on there one night. Yeah, Breffney Morgan, he's a good lad. I'm, I must uh, I must get Breff on to uh, just discuss what the um, what the situation with like Russia and Ukraine is from from his point of view. I was on the phone to him there about a couple of months ago, and uh, I was saying what was said about like the guy who drove the truck through the fucking embassy. He's like, Oh oh yeah, but you know, like that was, that was on TV over here. That, that, that wasn't forgotten about. And next thing you know, you've got like Russian state media saying that they're going to fucking detonate a torpedo with a nuclear warhead off the coast of Ireland. I was like, that's what happens Ireland when you start fucking, you know, getting involved in shit. That's nothing to do with you. Yeah. Like the whole Ukraine thing, right. And here's how I see it because I'm like anything that comes out of mainstream media for me, I'm like, okay, what's the, what's the complete opposite of that? And then you start kind of working your way back from there because they have a track record of just complete horse shit and they have done for many years. And um, anything I, I usually go to independent media and regarding the, the Ukrainian conflict, there was so much fucking propaganda and misinformation. It was like the ghost of Kiev shot down 40 planes in one day and, an old woman said to a Russian soldier, here, take these sunflower seeds, and when you die, you shall fertilize them. And a field of all this fucking poetic nonsense. And you got, you know, there's a lot of these people who would consider themselves as being like humanitarians who were gleefully ushering in the prospect of young men killing each other in a combat situation. I mean, like, the idea of, you know, there was people on Twitter, got like a column of tanks that had been fucking shot by Ukrainians. And that's at least three men burning to death in a metal fucking tank. 
I mean, that you can't, that's just, you know, one of the worst ways you could possibly go. And it's like, you know, the same people were like, these lockdowns, one life lost is too many. But like, okay, these men in their prime who are being fucking sent to a avoidable conflict, that's grand. So it's like, I, I just see it as being like complete hypocrisy from a humanitarian point of view. The whole, the whole war in Ukraine was completely avoidable. Um, and I don't know, I don't know if it was like some sort of pre-planned thing, you know, look, someone, like there's always, you've always got to ask yourself the question, who benefits at the end of the day? Like the OPEC are now in the driving seat when it comes to, you know, oil and, um, yeah. you know, there's food shortages, the price of everything's going up. Someone's benefiting, benefiting from that. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's like, I might sound like some sort of like crazy bastard, but once you go down enough rabbit holes, you start like going, yeah, maybe everything's a big fucking scam. And, uh, you know, you've just got to have an open mind and, you know, have discernment and just like, it's funny that the people I know who are streetwise that, you know, have been around scams and like my friend, Jono, for example, I was working in a bar with him years ago and he's on the same page as me. Like we were working together in a bar and he goes, look at that lad over there. And I was like, what lad? And pointed out a guy who was going for a woman's handbag. And then he goes, this is the security guard. And then the security guard catches him, throws him out. And I went, how the fuck do you know that? And he goes, you've been in the game as long as me, Marty. You know the crack. So like anyone who's aware of um, crime, you know, or, or like pulling fast ones or strokes, you know the type, you can kind of see it. But like just because these, these institutions are you know, they're manicured and maintained in such a way where they look like they're benevolent organizations and entities. You can see the fucking con job a mile away. But I think, we're, we're, you know, it's not something that you're taught in, in school. You know, it's like it's something that you, you if your parents you know, teach you this or, you're, or you learn it from experience. But most people just trust blindly the what they're told by uh, authoritative news sources and you know, um, government agencies. Do I sound like a mad fucker, Mars? I'd like to hear your opinion on it. Not at all. Not at all. No, I know exactly what you're saying. And, you know, I've seen a lot of things like that over the last couple of years. And, uh, but over here, like in this country, it's still very much uh, media driven. I think because the, the population, the newspapers are still a massive thing over here. The news is still a massive thing. Mm. The, and then I don't really think the young people really care, to be honest. That's it. You know, I didn't care until, I suppose, I, we go back to the Ukraine situation. I remember in 2014 thinking I was informed because I was reading The Guardian, watching BBC, watching RT News. And I was like, you know, I was like completely, yeah, good on you, Ukraine. You know, come and join the EU. But then, you know, you look into it and you have people like um, Goldfarb and Cole Moisky, who owns One Plus One Media, who was the guy who his TV channel produced Servant of the People, where Vladimir Zelensky played a reluctant teacher who became the, you know, the leader of the country. And then, <laughs> surely enough, he becomes the leader of the state and now they're at fucking war and losing 200 men a day and... You know, if, if you look at the, the ground that, you know, I mean, the thing is, you know, you have like hard line banderites, like far right militia in Ukraine that have tattoos of swastikas, like actual Nazis. And it's like the media is like, Shh, don't look at that bit, you know, and they've been, you know, shelling the, the Donetsk and Donbass since... Like, you know, you know, all these conflicts, like in the beginning, they, they, they start. And then after a while, the news cycle moves on to something else. But these areas are always going to be affected by these conflicts. And that war continued on. And <clears throat> like when Russia went in there, they said that they were going in to demilitarize the place. And, um, you know, it's it's if uh, if russia wanted to go in blitzkrieg and completely like just annihilate ukraine they could have done it in the first couple of days but they went in to take strategic bases out and, and, and like i said the whole conflict could have been avoided um you know there was no adults in the room when it came to um 
you know, resolving the conflict. You know, Anthony, well, Tony Blinken and, you know, the, the U.S. State Department, you know, Tory Newland, who would, um, selected Zelensky over Klitschko, you know, and this was, this has gone back years. So, like, there's Burisma, an, an awful lot of fucking meddling and corruption going on there, but I won't get into that. But, um, yeah, when I was reading RT, or reading Guardian and, and, and watching RTE, I thought I was informed. I wasn't. I just thought I was informed because I, you know, had that perspective of this curate, curated narrative that I was watching. I was like, okay, I'm watching the news, therefore I, I'm informed. And young people, they've, they've, they've a lot of stuff going on. They've like they've they've got their lives to lead, and you know when you when you when you get older, you you start you know you have to <laughs> gracefully buy out bow buy or bow out of like piss ups with you know and consuming pop culture, and then you kind of come to stage with like you know I was like I was, I was thinking to myself earlier on, isn't it funny all the things that I really thought were important when I was younger, objectively speaking, looking back as a kind of a Mid, you know, quasi middle aged man. It's all fucking. It's all frivolous nonsense. You know, you go to a gig and it's like, yeah, it's good. We're looking at people playing some nice songs on stage, but like a fucking Champions League match, win or lose, like my 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 life isn't going to be affected. I'm, I'm still going to have to, you know, hustle myself. Whereas the lads are playing the football match, they're getting paid anyway. You know, and and this is like a bit of a bit of a fucking cynical way of looking at things, but in the grand scheme of things, you got to fucking look after yourself, Morris, and get your kicks while you can. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, to go back to the original point, um, yeah, young people, most of them, you know, you can't put an old head on young shoulders at the end of the day. Yeah, we were we were once that age as well, like kind of yeah, as a touch absolutely. So... Any regret yourself lately, Morris? What have you been up to? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Talk that. Got very serious there, didn't it? That always does, man. Always fucking does. No That's crack. I have a comedy anymore. <laughs> no crack. I have a Krishna now coming up next week. A young one's Krishna on Saturday. So I love you a bit of crack. That's, that's about as exciting as it gets. So, so you know the plan with the Krishna and get, get the old water over the head, get to the pub, get rid of the kids as quickly as possible, and then stay oh, out drinking for the rest of the night. You know what? That's one thing I really miss about, you know, living in a foreign country is just like the lack of family to help out. Like, if, yeah. if, if it's back home, if I let me mind them, go off, you know, and yeah. um, that's definitely like in-laws and you know your parents aunties uncles they're like they're worth the weight in gold you know and that's yeah. um that's what you that's what community is about man you know it's um yeah. keep your community strong and uh you know fucking you know what i mean every 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 family member is an arrow when you quiver yeah keep your community strong i think that's how we'll uh wrap up today's show and exactly we will hopefully catch Strong. up again soon. <laughs> yeah, I've enjoyed talking to you, man. It's nice to nice nice to to, to chat with you. I do enjoy yeah. the, the podcast as well. It was yeah, I did. It was nice and um just done whatever, you know, didn't we? You should have way more subscribers, man. I don't know what the fuck's going on here, but that's uh, the porn star it's the porn stars and it's people talking about weed and prostitutes and whatnot and yeah i don't i don't get it I mean. whatever, <clears throat> whatever <throat> kind of crazy people i'd have on with different opinions maybe has something to do with it i don't know the views yeah, are okay I, the views are yeah, you've, you've, you've got some massive views on, on, on 200 some 200 200 000 now this week as of this week so but only yeah, like six the subscribe count is is a, is a tough one like you know what i mean yeah there's but, 16 1600 subscribers right and maybe some videos might only get 100 views it just doesn't make sense like what's the point in subscribing so if you're if you're subscribed and not watching don't bother subscribing yeah don't get it uh, so yeah. if you're watching subscribe to cheap heat productions and also maloney's digest two great yes. channels if you're just knocking about work have a listen yeah um, we're getting getting about 50 cent a day at the moment we want to bring it up to oh, at least man. 65 massive 70 money cent. man massive money <laughs> That's what I was saying about doing the the Hardy Books podcast. I mean, I've I've had some some interesting guests. I've had Eddie Bravo on that. I've had, I had the late John McAfee. I think I was one of the last people to speak to him. Um, <clears throat> who else? Um, Paul Gallagher, Lehman Knowles' brother. Um, yep. The Hardy Books lads. 
And um, yeah, then I started doing the Hardy book. Have you listened to much of that? I've heard, I think I've only heard the first couple because we were talking about it there last time you were on. I don't, I don't listen to podcasts that much at all. I'm kind don't of like, yourself, to be honest with you. I'm more of a YouTube I'm so, man. Yeah, I, I much prefer YouTube, but I'm just uh, so busy all the time. So I'm working 40 hours a week doing DJing at the weekends, trying to get two to three podcasts. Where are you Usually up in Fibber McGee's, up in Dublin. Up in uh, Pano Street? Oh, yes. Really? Yeah. What kind of tunes you listen to, man? Oh, heavy metal. Heavy metal. Yeah, that's that's my jam all the way, man. I'm you there, actually. You should come to us. Uh, what? You should come to Stockholm. Like, at least, like, Stockholm still has appreciation for hard rock. Yeah, we were going to go to Sweden, actually, to see Ramstein. But then it was cancelled, or they they rescheduled their tour or something. And it didn't work out. I think they may have played there a couple of weeks ago. Did you ever hear of a Swedish band called Pain? Pain, no. There's a there's a guy I met a couple of weeks ago called Gregor. He's a sound skin and he's an excellent musician. And uh, he's he was doing he was on the road with Till from Ramstein. They were touring around Russia. But uh, yeah, Ramstein man, like I'd, I'd love to see a Ramstein concert as well. Then they can stand there and the crowd be all cynical going. Uh, it's all about my life. <laughs> <laughs> we are living in America, Coca Cola, sometimes war. It's funny, I remember coming back from the States and uh, my little playlist I used to listen to still have the same playlist that I still listen to, but just add songs onto it. But I remember meeting this German girl at this Halloween party the day I got back, and I was like, So, what's he saying in the song? She's like, It's fucking shit. It's like Britney Spears lyrics. We are dancing here. We are dancing there. <laughs> I was like, all right. But it sounds good, though. Yeah. yeah. I suppose it's like what Japanese people must feel like when they listen to Puddle of Mud. Or Richie Kavner. <laughs> I was only joking, because I know you had your man from Puddle of Mud. I, he was a really cool guy. I enjoyed Yeah, that. my my microphone fucked up for that one, so I had to like edit the whole thing. Because uh, I was wondering, he kept going like this. <laughs> like putting his ear up and, and I was like, what the fuck is he doing? That's Zoom for you though. I have serious problems with Zoom all the time. Uh, Zoom's a waste of time, man. Well, yeah. it's all right if you can use it. It's Sorry for classrooms. But he he's he was a really cool guy. Like uh, I, I enjoy listening to that. Yeah, he's How been through a lot of shit. Uh, just, just, all. <laughs> just uh just well, through the website, just took a gamble and took a while, but got him on eventually. Yeah, it's hard Working. to get this lined up, man. Like I yeah. actually totally forgot that we'd had this lined up tonight, and it was like when I seen the message, I was like, "Oh shit!" So uh, I just like I was just like, "Ah, he's busy, be grand." Yeah, you know. But uh, I, 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 anytime, mate, anytime, I'm always happy to come on. Yeah, we'll definitely catch up again, man. It was nice to nice to talk to you, and we'll talk to you again soon. And what was the moral of the episode? The moral of the episode was, um, God, I don't know. What Keep would you say? Strong. Oh yeah, keep the community strong. But uh, yeah, Especially... man, I, I wouldn't mind coming in into Fibbers with you sometime. We could do some sort of like DJ thing. I'm there one like, Friday month. Yeah, the word the Fibbers boys, man. Fibbers is a beautiful spot, man. This is like, I like the way the the beer garden is now. Like, it's turned into like a, a huge outdoor area. Is yeah. Owen into you much? Because he he just be hanging out there a good bit. I think he's living back up in the West Door now. Um, mm -hmm. I seen him. I've seen him in there a couple of times. All right, and uh, Fibbers is like one of the only places you can get a bottle of Bookfast to drink out of the bottle inside. That's like the, they used to do that in uh, what's the fucking the Bernard Shaw. They used to have yeah. Bookfast. I'll tell you one thing: Bookfast, the price of that nowadays, twenty quid in the pub. <laughs> 20, twenty quid in the pub. Yeah, fourteen fifty in in the shop. You, you wouldn't mind 20 quid in the pub. Like, that's that's not much of a markup, to be honest. Yeah. And, a, and 20 quid for a bottle of Buckfast. It's not a bad old night out. So, like, we, three brew we, dog would cost you that, like. We normally get it maybe between two or three of us and just pour it into glasses and just down it. Has to be fucking done, hey. Yeah. Any chicken Listen, man, there? <laughs> there's, there's actually meanies in there. They serve meanies in Buckfast. Get me over, man. Yeah. Get me over. Right. Go on, I'll talk to you soon. Lovely talking to you. Good on you, Mars. You too, my man.